Hi, oh, g'day, it's uh, Charlie again. Well, I'm finally back off, uh, off leave, so just want to do a couple of videos. The first one here will be um, on what will become the, or what is, the variable frequency oscillator, oscillator and the, uh, the beat frequency oscillator uh, and the display and the like. Um, again, as we said early on, going to reuse an old Teensy microcontroller here. So that'll be the uh, the main controller for reading the input switches and the various modes of what will become the radio. Uh, drive the screen. Unfortunately, the refresh rate here on the screen is sort of um, a bit of an alias here going on with the, the refresh rate of the camera here, but that's that's rock solid in normal visual. Um, as well as driving the, the SI5351. So two outputs there, uh, clock zero and clock one. So clock zero will be the variable frequency oscillator, and then clock two will be the, the beat frequency oscillator. Um, with the Teensy, it's got an inbuilt, or this comes with the sound card. So the out output of this Teensy here is running through to the speaker. And at the moment, the input I've just got going through here to the phone, just running a, a simple audio oscillator here. So um, on the Teensy, and we'll look at the code in a sec, just running some uh, a simple pass through audio. So whatever comes in to the Teensy is essentially going straight out of the Teensy. Uh, there's no digital signal process going on at this point in time. That will come later. Let me just zoom up on that. Um, that will come later once we uh, start to add some functionality. We'll, we'll do the coding for that. So again, uh, whatever comes in is going straight out. Um, and we're also doing a little fast Fourier transform on that, which has been displayed here. Um, at the moment, that's displaying um, 0 hertz up through to 20 kilohertz. So if I just put on the audio oscillator there... Um, uh, we'll probably do volume differently later on, but at the moment if I push this button here and change the pot, then I can change the frequency. If I take my finger off, say again the volume, if I take my finger off then it changes the frequency. So uh, later on we'll see what we do, but it's just a, a simple way of adjusting the volume at this point in time, because the Tensi allows you to change its internal volume settings. So again, push the button and I can change the, change the volume. So let me just a bit of an annoying tone. That's a one kilohertz tone, and we can bring it up to uh, ten kilohertz, and you'll see our, our little frequency come up. And then we can bring that all the way up to. Let me just go up to twenty k, and there goes twenty k there. So again, just dropping down twenty nine, nine eight seven six five four three two one, and down to in this particular case four hundred hertz. Um, what I think I'm going to do, my, my initial thoughts were to use um, this um, filter for the IF. This is a 2.8 kilohertz single sideband um, filter, which I've used before. It works really well. But then what I've sort of decided thing I'm going to do for the intermediate frequency um, filter is instead use this one here, the 90B. This is an AM filter. So this has got 6 kilohertz bandwidth. And what I'm thinking there, I'm still going to align it such that it does the um, cuts off the, the image frequency, but that'll pass 6 kilohertz, which means then down here um, I'll have 6 kilohertz to play with in the Teensy. So I'm going to change this FFT to be 0 all the way through to 6 kilohertz, and then what we can do then in software is create a variable filter to work on the audio, which will provide us with our, the, um, the, the, the bandwidth we want for the type of signal we got. So, um, for example, at the moment it's on CW uh, between lower sideband, upper sideband, CW. So CW narrow, wide, um, and you know, notionally you want to go for say a 2.3 kilohertz filter, then we can do that, or a 2.8 kilohertz, whatever. We've got six six kilohertz to play with. So that's my thinking. Um, I can't see, I can't think of too many negatives at this point. But hey, if it doesn't work, then we'll just go back to this one. So I'm not too concerned about that. So anyway, this is just a um, just to get things up and running. Um, uh, what else can we just say here? Uh, 12 volts down to 5 volts. For the um, for the microcontroller, um, using I2 I, I2C for the communications, driving the, both the um, SI5351 and the LCD, uh, standard rotary encoder, um, and 
with the Teensy 3.1, I've still got a few spare pins that aren't being used to communicate between the Teensy and the underlying audio board. So I'll use those data pins to a I'll find one which is pulse width modulation to drive what will be the S meter, and the others I'll use to um, switch various parts of the circuit. So uh, with the diode switching for the various bands. Um, this is by no means the complete um, display, this is just quickly knocking up, uh, displaying the frequency and the band and the bandwidth just to, to get things going. Um, the way in which I change frequency here is if I push the button down, so that's the, the, the button within the um, rotary encoder, and rotate at the same time, the little bar below the frequency shifts, and when I release, that'll be the one that starts to move now. Um, I haven't, this is more general coverage, I haven't put any code in there to say if you go beyond 40 meters then just to jump straight into 20 meters. Um, but again this is just purely test code to get things up and running. Again push the button, rotate, rotate and then I can start to change that one or whatever I like. So uh, I find that's quite an easy way of, if you really want to fine tune you can jump down here and fine tune away. Right so let's just break here and we'll go and have a look at the code. Um, and then we'll get on with the, uh, the next part of the circuit. Okay, so here we are within the Arduino um, IDE um, for the code that's currently sitting on that little TC 3.1. Um, I won't go in line by line and I'll certainly make this available for people who want to tinker. Um, it's purely just some code to get things up and running as we move forward. Now you'll see here Band start is the bottom of the three and a half or three and a half megahertz, which is the bottom of the 80 meter band. Um, make that now four, uh, 20 meters, and the, the top end is 14.2. So I've constrained the top and the bottom range of frequencies, but at this stage I haven't put any other logic in there. To, for example, if you go to beyond 3.9 here in New Zealand, to jump then straight up to 7.0, but uh, that's easy enough to do later on. Uh, just some assignments there for the various pins. I've uh, got a couple of input switches there which we, which you saw. One was for the volume and one was for the mode. Um, and as I said, at the moment we're not doing any digital signal processing. So whatever comes in, so this is the assignments you do for the uh, the Teensy itself. Uh, so the audio input zero or left is going straight to the output. That same input is going to the fast Fourier transform and then the other side um, not that I'm actually using stereo but for, for the heck of it uh, the other side of the input is going straight to the output so at the moment no DSP no filtering no nothing it's just straight um, straight in straight out um, I won't go into the setup uh, basically just, just setting up the pins set up the audio shield uh, using line in um, setting up the, the digital synthesis chip. Uh, we talked about both clock zero and clock one, or clock two, sorry. So just basically initializing those. Um, we're using interrupts for the rotary encoder. Um, that works well. Uh, I find that's just a nice rock solid way of if the rotary encoder changes, then you get a really instant um, update on your, on your frequency. The loop itself, um, essentially just runs through is the display ready to update if it is go and update the display uh, checks to see if the fast Fourier transfer is available um, at the moment um, I'm running on an average so let's double, uh, no, we'll get it later on um, so what else want to talk about here if anything uh, again just reading this, the digital switches coming in so I don't think it's worth going line by line on this uh, but suffice to say that later on um, we will start to add some more DSP around that whole filtering to give us the, the various um, bandwidths for the audio uh, on the output as well as some of the other logic for driving once we change bands changing um, various parts of the circuit with that diode switching uh, for interest sake, um, this is part of the code that looks at when the um, rotary encoder is being switched and again if the push pin, push pin is down that we talked about and it changes the radix. 
if the push pin is not down and it changes the frequency so um, just a nice easy way of sort of inserting that in the code um, and same with the volume if the volume switches down and you're rotating it then it will, it will modify the volume so nice and nice and easy uh, run and through there this is just the, 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 the function here for updating the display um, this part here looks at drawing that fast Fourier transform so it's just basically an array of bins uh, because the display is only uh, what is it, 160 across I can't display every bin so I do every fourth bin um, and that seems to work quite well and just basically positioning the cursor at different parts of the screen different font sizes and then in this particular case printing the frequency and then uh, printing underneath the frequency that little radix display that little bar tells me what part of the uh, the frequency is being changed um, this part here is changing the mode uh, and and the like this function down here is sending the frequency so this is actually sending the command that changes the SI5351 to change frequency uh, here goes clock 0 and there goes clock 2 um, this whole section here will change quite a bit once we start to add functionality be it CW, uh, upper sideband and lower sideband so depending on the mode there will be a number of statements here that will check what mode you're in and then uh, it will configure the, uh, the, the DDS as we, as we need it and I think it's one of the beauties of um, this, of a digital synthesis chip, um, is the flexibility. It's just so easy to to set the frequency to be whatever you want based on um, some parameters, um, which is good. And we can use that to fine tune to to get the uh, the BFOs is spot on the right frequency um, and the like. Anyway, so like I say, that's just a very simple test code, um, nothing elaborate just enough to basically get us up and running get the output changing frequency um, to allow us to move forward so the next step now will be to uh, look at the RF amplifier for the input so I'll put a quick video up on that um, and then after that probably look at uh, getting back into those J310s to make up some kind of um, uh, mixer and then the, uh, the product detector at the end um, Probably, uh, probably similar to what um, Pete Giuliano is doing at the moment in 6QW. He's doing a, uh, a direct conversion receiver first, and then turning that into a super hit. Um, I've certainly done that before, and uh, it's, it's a good way of doing it, just to sort of test your circuit as you move forward. So we'll see how that one turns out. Otherwise, probably enough for now. Um, any questions, sing out. Uh, otherwise, we will keep tinkering and burning some solder, and we'll see what pops up. Thanks very much. Catch you later.